Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we're going to break down five names that have been linked to the Texas Tech men's basketball coaching job. Obviously, there's others, but we'll break down these five. And I really want to get y'all's opinion on these five because they're very interesting from the standpoint of, well, two of them have been linked to this job for a long time. The other three, well, kind of, but one specifically not really mentioned at all until recently, and that's who we start off with. Of course, if you've been paying attention to this whole thing, it's been the Grant McCaslin, the Paul Mills of the world, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. But the name I want to talk about right now is former NBA head coach and assistant head coach James Borrego, okay? And when you look at his resume, Borrego is one of those guys that is just well-respected, around the whole industry. I mean, when you have the kind of resume that he does, you're going to be respected, especially when you coach with a guy like Greg Popovich for a long period of time. And now I know a lot of y'all will go look up his NBA record as a head coach. He's coached for the Charlotte Hornets. What do you want the man to do? Like it's a bad run franchise. He was put in a place that there was no way he was going to succeed. A perfect example right now is the Houston Rockets. They run their NBA teams like an AAU team. It doesn't work that way at that level of basketball. And James was just simply collateral almost in a way um, for them. But I really like Perego from the standpoint of an X and O's guy. He is very well respected in that regard. Go watch some of Greg Popovich's interviews talking about him with his time with the Spurs. Also just Greg Popovich talking about him when he was the coach of the Charlotte Hornets, right? Obviously that didn't go well for him, but he is a guy that has interviewed multiple times with Texas Tech. And the thing that really stands out with me for him, I would love the hire. I really would if I knew who the staff was around him. And the reason being is this, do I think he can recruit? Absolutely. I really do. But I want to have guys around him that already have that recruiting base, that are already known as great recruiters. One thing I would love to see, and we'll actually talk about this guy a little bit later on in the video, I would love to see a return of Barrett Peary to the 806 alongside Berega, right? You have James as the head coach, and then you got Barrett as the associate head coach, and they kind of work as a tandem right there, right? I would love to see that. Will that happen? I don't know, but I think that that might be a dream scenario if Berega was indeed hired for Texas Tech. Now, really the thing that stands out to me most when it comes to him, because he's the newest name of the bunch that we'll talk about today, it's that NBA background, right? He's got connections to LaMelo Ball, He's got connections to Kawhi Leonard. He's got connections to big time NBA names, right? And I think that would help on the recruiting trail. I do think he'd be able to recruit. It's just the fact we really haven't been able to see that from him in his coaching career since his entire coaching career has taken place at the NBA level. All right, before we get into the other names, I want to know, do you like the idea of hiring a guy like James Borrego if you are Texas Tech? Just let me know. It's going to be the pinned comment down below. Why for yes in for no. All right, let's talk about some of the names that have been heavily linked to this job. As we know, Grant McCaslin, Paul Mills, as well as Andy Kennedy. Andy Kennedy, a little less so than these two we'll talk about right now. We know about Grant McCaslin, right? We know what really stands out in terms of the strengths and the weaknesses for him. The strengths, great defensive head coach. Arguably one of the best in college basketball, right? Offensively, the pace is, whew, yeah, it's uh, not very good to say the least, but they end up winning in Conference USA, right? Like he wins games. I wonder if that would change and what the staff would look like if he came along in terms of just the offensive scheme changing a little bit and maybe a little bit of a faster pace. I'm not asking you to be seven seconds or less, but I'm just asking you to not be the worst pace college basketball team, and that's what North Texas was uh, this past season. And again, I, I really like the idea of these two guys, and maybe I'm too high on it. Let me know in the comments. I really like the idea of going to the Scott Drew tree. I think Scott Drew produces assistant coaches that turn into successful head coaches at a high rate. He knows what he's doing there. Baylor knows what they're doing, like it or not, if you're a Red Raider fan. And perfect example, well, to a degree anyway, is Jerome Tang, right? Like, I'm not saying you're going to get a Jerome Tang 
Kai coach Adam Grant McCaslin or Paul Mills, but they were there. They've coached together. They've seen what it's like to work under Scott Drew and get to that next level, right? So they've been successful where they've been at, specifically McCaslin. Um, and I really do like the idea of potentially going the Baylor assistant route. Um, well, at least former Baylor assistant route. Paul Mills, obviously a former Baylor assistant as well. Um, kind of flipped almost in a way when it comes to Grant McCaslin. Uh, Paul Mills, more of an offensive guy, still solid defensively, but super efficient on the offensive t offensive end, excuse me, is Oral Roberts. And an interesting part that I don't think people are bringing up enough is the fact that he could bring a couple of those Oral Roberts guys along, um, including Max, their point guard. I mean, he is an absolute stud, one of the best point guards in college basketball. He's got one year of eligibility left. Now, I'm not saying that he would 100% come along with him, but I could potentially see that as well as maybe another guy as well. So I want to ask you all this before we get into two other names to end the video. Who would you pick between these two, McCaslin and Mills, right? I just want to know. Let me know what their initials below. GM for McCaslin, PM for Paul Mills. I I really think it's interesting to see like the idea and thought process of Texas Tech fans right now in the sense of where they would go between these two. Uh, do you want to stay on the defensive end? Do you want to stay? Do you want to move to the offensive end? Very interesting stuff. So let me know down in the comments below. All right. So the last two names we'll mention, we'll start off with Andy Kennedy. He's considered the outsider of this group, right? You think about it, he was, he's was he been a former coach at Mississippi, um, Cincinnati as well. He's got He's right now at UAB. Listen, he's been to the NCAA tournament three times in 16 years. Um, now, to be fair, the UAB teams that he's had, they've won 22 or more games every year, 27 games at least the past two years, right? He has experience at the power six level. Um, he's interesting to me, right? Like he ha he's a very good coach. There's no doubt about that. But it just feels like this is more of a name and hype type deal to me um, when it comes to Andy Kennedy. I think it would be a solid hire. Again, for all of these guys, it would come down to staff for me. Um, unless it's, you know, a name that's not mentioned in this video, which... It could be, but I feel like it, it's going to end up being one of these guys when it's all said and done. Um, and we're getting far along in this process. So maybe Andy Kennedy's the guy. I like his scheme. I like his recruiting style. I like the way that wherever he goes, um, it typically just seems like he wins games, right? Like it may take him a minute just because of perfect example is Mississippi. Uh, when he got there, they were an awful team. Got him back to where they were. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, things happened while he was in Oxford, but he did turn that program around to a degree. The next one, and I think probably the most unlikely one when it comes to him being the head coach at Texas Tech is Barrett Peary. He is beloved by Texas Tech fans and he is by and he is beloved by people in this process that are making the decision for Texas Tech. You look at what he's done. He's one of the most well respected assistant coaches in college basketball, period. End of story. Um, he's an elite West Coast recruiter, an elite offensive mind, and he wants to be in the 806. There's a lot of situations and happenstances that happened last year in terms of him leaving the program. He wants to be in the 806. Him and his family love Lubbock, Texas, and their time out here. Uh, but unfortunately, it came to an end. I don't think that he has a outstanding chance to be the head man, but I would absolutely love it. If any of the coaches that we mentioned in this video hire him as the associate head coach because he is truly one of the best assistant coaches in the country. And if they decide to go the head coaching route with Barrett Peary, I think he can get a very, very elite staff around him. If you want Barrett Peary to be the next head coach of Texas Tech men's basketball, all I ask you to do is this. Simply like the video and then let me know one more time. Who do you want to be? the next Texas Tech head men's basketball coach. Is it somebody on this list? Is it somebody else that's getting down to crunch time and it feels like things are heating up on this head coaching search for Texas Tech men's basketball? I am RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want to be a part of the largest Texas Tech community here on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know all year long on everything Texas Tech athletics right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.